Next up, I want to just, without further ado, bring on our very first speaker for the day, and that is Fran from Superfluid. And uh, without further ado, let's welcome Fran to really tell all of you about the Superfluid reactor. Welcome, Fran. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I'm going to share my screen and show a short presentation while I do this. So welcome, everyone, uh, to the Superfluid Reactor Summit. Uh, we're extremely excited to have uh, so many people joining in uh, to, to listen to this. We're very excited to be partnering with EVE Global for this. We're, we've got a very strong uh, relationship with EVE Global. We've sponsored a lot of their hackathons. And it's a great honor for us uh, to be able to have this platform to tell everyone a bit more about our ecosystem, our community, and uh, the future we see uh, enabled through our protocol. So first of all, let me just uh, do some sound check here. I hope by now most of you know about Superfluid, uh, but just very quickly, Superfluid is a DeFi um, protocol for digitally native programmable cash flows. We enable users to stream money on chain with no capital lockup and with full programmability. So effectively, Superfluid is a protocol. What this means is that it's a shared uh, means, a shared set of rules that govern the way information or value is transmitted, right? So what we're doing is we're building the rails. We're building the rails to enable a new kind of finance that happens in real time because money streams happen every second. So everything needs to be kind of rebuilt to uh, use and to adapt to these uh, real-time money streams. And the way we envision this is a completely free flowing economy, right? Where, where money can flow from application to application, from hand to hand in a peer to peer fashion on the blockchain with no friction. That's, that's what superfluid means. Superfluid means no friction. But obviously a protocol in itself is not that useful, right? It's just, again, a set of rules that govern the way information is transferred. What's really necessary and what we are really building for is for builders like you to enable you to come and build applications that leverage this cool technology that we've uh, invented, right? But that in itself is not useful. There's so many use cases that can be explored. There's so many different verticals. There's so many different uh, ways that streaming money can really change the way a lot of people experience uh, the transfer of value. And that's something we can't do alone. There's just no way we can explore all these different niches and uh, industries where money streaming could potentially have a big impact. And this is the reason why we're always trying to build for builders. We're always trying to invite more and more builders to come and explore the opportunities of the Superfluid protocol. So far, we've sponsored over 20 hackathons. We've had over 400 projects built at hackathons. We've, uh, we're incubating a lot of uh, projects, although so far it's been mostly informal. We have a lot of integrations and there are a few projects that are already live and that you can go out and test right now that leverage the Superfluid protocol. But ultimately what we noticed is that a lot of products tried to build something at a hackathon, but it wasn't quite enough, right? A lot of people don't know how to go from a project built at a hackathon to a real life production application. That step is not that easy, but that step is what we did and it's what uh, we can help you do. Right, Superfluid was born at a hackathon, which means we know how to go from a hackathon project to a real life uh, working startup. So we asked our community, we said, you know, how can we help more of you, more applications uh, go from, you know, the prototype stage to the production stage? And obviously a lot of the people who even replied to this question were people that we had helped, right? Because we helped a lot of people. You'll hear a bit more about this uh, from the next presenters, but we've helped people build on Superfluid and go and build startups from their ideas, but we never formalized that. And what, what the response was, was pretty clear. We need to create an accelerator. So what I'm announcing now is actually the Superfluid reactor, which is an accelerator focused on your growth. We help startups that build on Superfluid by selecting the best ones, the best teams, the best founders, and the best ideas to come and join our community and start building with us. We follow you from fundraising, building the product, and launching the product, and securing those key partners that will get you started uh, as a rocket ship and not just as a hackathon project. And the best of all is that all of this is free. We don't charge neither in money nor in equity. So it's 100% free. 
and the applications, the projects and the teams that we select will be able to go through all of this free of charge. And this is a very big difference compared to most accelerators out there who take a significant part of your equity. Now, if this is interesting to you, sign, uh, sign up here. So you can just go to reactor.superflow.finance. You can find all the information. There's a sign up form and everything is there. But let me just tell you a bit more about the ways uh, that the Superfluid Reactor can help you get ready for production. And again, the Superfluid Reactor's objective is to get you to fundraise and to production. After that, it's up to you. So we're not going to do the work for you, but we are going to help you to get there. So the first thing is technical guidance. Now, as uh, Vincent says from our team, it's very easy to learn Solidity. It's very hard to master Solidity. Now, building an application for a hackathon is not the same as building an application for production, right? You can make something that works once, but working once and working a million times with no faults is completely different. And we can help you both architecting this, but also developing the right uh, practices in terms of testing, in terms of adversarial thinking that are really necessary when building in Web3. Now, unlike Web2, as you might know, Web3 contracts are generally immutable. There's a lot more that can go wrong and there's a lot less you can do about it. So it's very important that you know, the architecture of your app is correct. And if you're coming from Web2, there's a lot of new things that we can uh, help you quickly learn about. So again, building a prototype is not the same as building a production application. And that's where our guidance can really help you accelerate along that journey. Now, second, uh, second thing I'd mention is product refinement, right? If you look at uh, most uh, web-free products, they're not that great, but some of them are amazing. Now, how do they do that? They do that through uh, interviews. They do that by talking to their customers, by hearing their feedback, and by, by basically adopting that feedback quickly and adapting over time. So the way we can help here is obviously with general product management uh, practices, but also with introductions to who your actual users are. Right. Imagine you're building something in Web3, but your target user is not some is not really a category that you are that familiar with. Right. In that case, you can talk to us. We can introduce you to the people that you need to talk to to actually understand what that category's needs are. Right. And this is very important in the product discovery phase. On top of this, you can always book one to one time with our uh, product manager, VJ, which means, you know, you can get his insight, get some of his expertise. And this is something that's always going to be available for uh, the Superfluid Reactor participants. Obviously, building a great product is very important, but you also need to get the voice out, right? You need people to know about it. And in this regard, marketing is the way to go. But marketing in Web3 is, again, extremely different to marketing in Web2, right? If you think of Web2, most startups spend almost all of their budgets on advertising, right? They'll give their money to Facebook, to Google, just to blast out advertisements. And that mostly works for them. In Web3, that doesn't work at all. If you spend money on uh, Twitter ads, nobody's going to read them. And in fact, that's generally bad practice. And people will actively ignore your product if you advertise. So how do you do it? How do you get out there? What you need to do is build a community. How do you build a community? Well, that's really hard, but we can help you, right? We've built a community at Superfluid. We have some people out there who are passionate about what we're building, and they are the best marketing tool that you can possibly have in Web3. Because in Web3, marketing is organic. And this is something we can talk more about, we can help you, and we can also introduce some of those early supporters that can really help you build an audience, which ultimately is what you need uh, when you're launching a product in Web3. On top of this, obviously building a great product is important, but you need to also get to market. You need to be able to get those first customers and perfect your product to the point where you meet product market fit. Now, how to do this? Uh, there's a lot of different ways, right? You can try and build in isolation and maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. But the approach that we generally suggest is to try and involve customers in your um, journey as soon as possible. And this is what we suggested to Tony from Diagonal. You're, you're going to hear a bit more uh, from Tony after, uh, after me. But what we did with them effectively guarantees that the day they launch, they launch with great launch partners, with a product that is specifically tailored to their needs, and uh, basically with the best possible partner uh, that they could launch with. So we're very excited to have helped them. And we're very excited uh, to hopefully in the future enable more people to launch uh, great products with immediate uh, go-to-market. Now, how do we achieve all of this? Well, 
most of this is not going to be us. It's going to be people we introduce. So introductions are by far the most important thing we can do for you. And this leverages over uh, five years of uh, industry connections that me and my co-founders and our team have created, right? We've been in the industry for a while. We know a lot of people. A lot of people know us and people respect us. So if we introduce you to someone, they're going to listen, right? And they're going to help you. And that's the single most important thing for product interviews, for marketing and community building. And of course, uh, for those key partnerships and those key launch partners that can help you go to market much quicker, right? So the people we can introduce are, you know, all sorts of different, um, different uh, key people in the industry. And of course, the best investors. Ultimately, whatever you do in Web3 is going to take time and time is money. You're going to need some sort of investment. This can come from the community or it can come from venture capital investors or angel investors. We have a very broad uh, network of investors. We can introduce you to them. And most importantly, there's a lot of investors who are looking into our ecosystem. They're very excited to see the next application built on streaming money. And they're very keen to explore those applications very early stage. So this is the perfect pipeline for us to introduce you to them very early and get you uh, with the right resources to get to production much faster. So overall, uh, if this has uh, sounds like something that you would like, go to reactor.superfluid.finance and apply now. It's a very short uh, form that you need to fill in. We'll get back to you. And what you can expect is um, periodic check-ins, introductions, help throughout, uh, throughout the time that you spend with us, connections with other people in the Reactor project, which means you can you know, talk about your experiences and help each other. And of course, some exclusive perks for Superfluid Reactor participants. Now, what else uh, to expect from today? So we have uh, over three hours of content. So during this uh, Reactor Summit, we're you know, very pleased to invite a lot of people from our ecosystem. So you'll have people from Ricochet, Diagonal, Huma Finance, and these are all applications built on Superfluid. Uh, none of them went through the Reactor because it's a new thing, but we did help them in different ways to get ready for production. And we're very excited to have them now come and share their experience, share their learnings with the rest of the community. After this, we'll have two panels. The first one is about uh, web free native business operations. And here you'll see some of our partners, Request Network, CoinShift, and Unlock Protocol, who are building um, basically products or protocols that help businesses operate on chain. This is something we are very passionate about because at Superfluid, we enable uh, basically recurring payments, right? So these uh, applications are using us to provide real value to real uh, web-free businesses. And that's something we are very grateful that we can partner with them about. After this, we'll have another panel with people from MakerDAO and uh, USDC. So we'll be able to discuss uh, stable coins and on-chain payments. On-chain payments, in our opinion, are something that's very unexplored and needs to be explored more. So we're gonna talk about that and we're lucky to have some you know, very important experts. So thanks a lot for listening to my talk. I assure you it's going to be the most boring. So the rest are much more exciting. But all I can ask you now is if you don't follow us on super follow us on Twitter, Superfluid HQ, and maybe follow me as well. And now I'll give the stage back uh, to Kardik. Maybe there's uh, a few questions we can we can answer, and then we can move on to the next speaker. Absolutely. Um, first of all, this is this is incredible, uh, and uh, thanks for kind of formalizing it. I know you've been uh, helping out a lot of uh, teams already. A lot of them we're going to see right now uh, come on uh, on stage and talk about what they've been doing. Um, I guess my, my broader question is um, overall kind of if you can just give some insight into how do you think about managing this thing for the first kind of cohort here? Like, is there an expectation of how many teams you want to get into uh, the first round or um, essentially like what are you looking for in terms of what stage they should be at? Like maybe we can start there. Yeah. And the well, one. we are hoping to get pro uh, projects basically straight out of the hackathon, right? Uh, as I said, Superfluid is born out of hackathon. You know, uh, EVE Global is kind of very embedded into our uh, history. And for us, uh, getting projects when they're still got that um, that excitement from the hackathon is the best time to really propel them. Um, at the moment, we don't have a clear number in mind, but there are definitely some projects that won't make the cut for the first uh, for the first cohort. But there's definitely a lot of room still. 
So if you're out there listening, one of the reasons we wanted to launch this during Hack Money is because Hack Money is the best DeFi uh, hackathon in the year, right? So we expect to uh, hopefully find some great projects here and bring them into the reactor and help them from here to go forward. So awesome. don't have exact numbers, but uh, it'll be a, I'm sure it'll be a good cohort because I've already seen some of the applications and they're pretty exciting. Uh, and then uh, uh, this... Uh just in, in the best interest of the teams that are going to be applying, uh, we often see a lot of people think that they're not good enough and they end up disqualifying themselves. So maybe if you can give any comments on like, what do you think is kind of considered a, a acceptable level of kind of progress so that they can convert their hackathon projects into something broader? Like, is there any advice you would give to like when they should think about their being ready? Of course. Um, it's really not so much about the product. It's a lot more about the team and the motivation. Right. The product obviously is important. Right. Uh, I think what a lot of people are going to see is now with the market shifting a bit, there's not as much money out there. So bad ideas are not going to have uh, as much funding as they could have had maybe six months ago. So really a good idea is important, but ideas can change over time. Right. What you build at the hackathon might not be the uh, idea that your startup builds uh, over the years. But your team is not going to change your founding team, your cohesion, your motivation and your um, grit, right? Your, your um, basically determination to make it is the most important thing. So whatever, whatever you're building, when you apply, just make sure that that comes through, that we can tell that you are determined to uh, really make this happen, right? And then I'd say uh, you're good. Amazing, well, that's uh, excellent timeless advice and uh, thank you for uh, kicking us off today. <laughs>